Hey everybody, we're here at Discovery World today in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. They have a Les Paul exhibit here, and we're gonna be checking out some instruments that were absolutely crucial in the creation of what we know as a solid body electric guitar. And it's 2020, so we're all gonna be wearing masks. Just assume I'll be smiling throughout. This is Les Paul. What is this? <laughs> this is so that you can see how strings move. Oh, Net wow. One. That is so... Now I'm just turning into a 12 year old. Where's an octave? You can see that the amplitude is here and at the note it's not vibrating. This is a whole other video. <laughs> okay, I'm done being a 12 year old, we can move on. We're talking about Les Paul. When he was 12 and 13, as he was playing his acoustic guitar, the box was vibrating. Yeah. In addition to the strings. And he said, I don't wanna hear the box vibrate. I just wanna hear the strings, although, he did want to amplify it better. He took his dad's record player, yeah. he took the arm off, pushed the needle into this, taped the arm there, plugged it into his dad's radio, uh -huh. and I said, Les, how did that work? And he said, I got a lot of feedback. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So then he thought, well, okay, I need to get rid of the hollow part. I need to fill it up. Next thing he did was fill it with plaster of Paris. What? That looks like there was some big mistake somewhere. <laughs> you know, there was a... Again, he's only 12 years old. I said, okay, how did that sound? He said, well, I had to get a new guitar. Yeah, I totally this wrecked is, it. This, is... this didn't work, but I still want something really solid. And he said, what's the most dense material I can think of? Well, Les lived across the street from a railroad track. And in the 1920s, railroad guys would come by and if they found a piece of rail that was flawed or whatever, they would physically cut it out. He said, well, that's the densest material that yeah. I can think of. So he got the two foot piece of rail, the spikes that they used. This is from his mother's telephone. Okay, so the this microphone. is- The microphone. Is the microphone also basically just a magnet, like a guitar pickup? I, I mean, so, I guess a pickup is kind of just a speaker in reverse. Right, so then you took just the guitar string and strung it across, and put your finger in there and pull it. <laughs> and Les said- Sounds like a bass guitar, yeah. You could go out and get a sandwich and come back and it would still be going. Yeah, because that was a big thing that was different. Like acoustic guitars didn't really have sustain like we know with electrics. So what year was this? About 1929. He was still in high school when he was doing this. So he called his mom and he said, look what I've done and listen to this. And she looked at him and said, this is... Lester. <laughs> the day, I don't know if there's a market for this. The day that you see a cowboy on a horse with a piece of rail <laughs> I don't think so. You could make a claim this is the first like solid body one string. It's very solid. It's very, <laughs> it's very solid. <laughs> so from this, we want to look at the log. Yeah. I love this. <laughs> yeah. Let's walk around this way. This is it. Yeah. It's a log. <laughs> this happened in New York, 19... 42-ish. He was good friends with the people at the Epiphone factory. And so the factory was closed down on Sundays mm -hmm. and they let him use it. Les was thinking, okay, I know that rail worked really well and I love the sustain yeah. and the lack of feedback. What can I do? So he took a four by four, which you see in the middle. Yeah, this is just a solid round. piece of wood. It's a solid four by four piece of wood. And he put the Epiphone neck on it and he strung it and put his pickup on it. And he took it to a club in New York called The Chic. And he said, I played it and it sounded fantastic. But he said no one was responding. Yeah. They, they didn't react at all. So then he thought, well, maybe it's because it doesn't look like a guitar. It looks kind of weird. Oh, just, so he was playing without these he, sides no, at first. No, the sides weren't there. Oh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I would have thought somebody playing a chunk of lumber would have attracted <laughs> a little attention, but it didn't. Huh. So then, he went back to the Epiphone factory, took an inexpensive Epiphone, sawed it in half, and you can see he put the wings on it. Yeah. Went back to the same club and people said, wow, what a fantastic, <laughs> what is yeah. an instrument? This is so great. That's so funny. I also, I love that it has a whammy bar on it. Yes. Like right, like right <laughs> on the gate, it has a whammy yes, bar. Yes, it does. <laughs> it, and Les talks about that, you know, that he put a whammy bar on it right away. Oh, and it even has a spring, and it even works a little bit differently than you would expect a whammy bar to. He took this to Gibson, and he said, I'm telling you, solid body electric guitar is the wave of the future. You guys gotta build this. <laughs> they looked at him, and they like, get out of here. Yeah. And they called him. <laughs> no one's gonna him. be interested in electric guitars. And it 
they called him the guy with the broomstick. So he moves to California, and he becomes friends with one of his neighbors, Leo Fender. I didn't realize that they were friends. I yeah. figured that they were just no, they competitors. were friends. He said Leo would come over, and we'd sit for hours and hours talking. And then he said, my other friend, Paul Bigsby, the three of them sitting around the backyard. All like, the names you see talking. on the instrument are just like hanging <laughs> right. out. Yeah. Talking about solid body electric guitars, the wave of the future. And he showed them the log. The three of them were fascinated by it. And in the meantime, Les keeps going back to Gibson. And they keep laughing at him. Leo eventually says, Les, how about you and I go in business together? We'll call it the Fender Paul guitar. Really? And we'll create our own solid body electric guitar and sell it. And when Les told me this, I said, what? What did you think of that? And he said, I actually seriously considered it for about a day. He said, I told Leo I need to think about it. Mm -hmm. He said, then I went back to Leo and I said, I really like the idea, but I've had this relationship with Gibson and I'm sure they're gonna come around sooner or later. <laughs> and Leo said, okay, but guess what? I'm going ahead. Yeah, that's and so fascinating to think of Gibson just Think, no, no, because now Gibson embraces the Les Paul so much. Yeah. Or I think a lot of people don't realize that Les Paul is even a person. The guitar has <laughs> just become so <laughs> iconic that yeah. they just think of a Les Paul as a Gibson Les Paul. Yes, either they don't realize Les is a person or they'll think he was only Les Paul and Mary Ford, just the performer. Yeah. Because Les is unique. He's the only person who is in both the National Inventors Hall of Fame yeah. and also the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. So let's keeps going after Gibson. When Leo makes his guitars, he gives one of his first guitars to his buddy, Les. Mm -hmm. Les is on Gibson's back again and says, you guys, guys. you gotta move. Cause if you don't do something, Fender's gonna, in his words were, rule the world. <laughs> so. I mean, for a little while, yeah, they had the only electric solid body guitar. Uh, Mr. Berlin, who was the owner of Gibson, at the company that owned Gibson at the time said, all right, bring Leo's guitar and bring your broomstick. <laughs> That's how it all started. I love how it attaches from the sides too. And it's just purely aesthetic, it's just because people thought only, it looked weird without the body on it. Right, just to help people understand it's a guitar. Mm -hmm. Th this was probably just a pickup from Epiphone that they gave him. No, the pickups he did himself. Oh, of course, because they didn't have Duh. <laughs> <laughs> I just can't imagine Epiphone yeah. or Gibson not having pickups. Yeah. Wow, that no. was dumb of me. <laughs> yeah. When did he finally get Gibson to... Well, the first Les Paul Gibson came out in 52, and he built this in 41. But so he was playing this around for 10 years before they yes, eventually... Yes, and his new sound that he created, he used the lock. The sound on sound. Yeah, and that's a whole other thing to impact because he didn't just make this. He made multi-track recording. Multi-track recording, one. yeah. The sound on sound is probably his most important invention. Yeah, yeah. Is that, he, that's what it was called, sound on sound? He called it sound on yeah. sound. I got, and maybe this is just a rumor. This isn't mm -hmm. real. I heard that it was called the Les Paul on the headstock because Gibson didn't want their name on it. That is what I have heard as yeah. well. Les told me that once the guitar was designed, Gibson said, well, we're still not sure of this product. and We don't know if we want our name on it. What We don't know what to call it. Okay, Les so said, yeah, put true. my name on it. <laughs> wow, that was a smart move. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And they were using his pickups too, his pickup technology. So he was also yeah. probably getting a cut of anything. Yes. I've also heard that, that anything that Gibson made with pickups in it, Les Paul got a cut because it was his invention. That I can't yeah, I don't, I don't yeah. know. Television was new, music yes. on television was yes. new. Yes. And was he a pioneer in that way? I've also he was. heard that. He had the first TV reality show. It was really? called Les Paul and Mary Ford at Home. Really? <laughs> yeah. I tied this string around my finger to remember to tell you something when you got back from shopping. I forgot what it was. Oh, not again. I mean, yeah. You know, I've seen some clips. I didn't yeah. know that it was from the yep. show. It's fun stuff. It, it kind of reminds me of some YouTubers I know. Uh. <laughs> like, <laughs> honestly, like it's just really fun and goofy. Les always wanted to be at the cutting edge. There was discussion back and forth about how long should the TV show be. Again, this is the beginning of TV. So they did five minute clips. Well, let's do the world's waiting for the sunrise while you try and think of it. It really does yeah. sound like early 2010s YouTube musicians. Can't yeah. go over five minutes. No. That's kind of the rule. Now it's totally the opposite. Yeah. <laughs> I heard too, and I wondered if this was also true, that he got a lot of backlash for being a musician on television, like from other musicians. Like he wasn't playing live, it wasn't being a real musician. Right, and he got a lot of backlash from when they did the commercials as well. Oh, Tyler. Hi, Tyler. Okay, so that's the guy. This cool. is it. The replica. 
80th anniversary Les Paul log tribute bill. This Ooh. thing is super wide too. It's the size of a jumbo acoustic too. Okay, okay thanks. How's it feel? Very heavy. <laughs> it feels like a, I mean, it feels like a log. <laughs> <laughs> we could get the whammy bar on it. Would they even call it a whammy bar at the time? He called it an apparatus for producing okay. tremolo effects. <laughs> I can see why we just went to whammy. <laughs> but is it really tremolo? It's a vibrato. Yeah. Yeah, it's not tremolo. No, that's... Why, why did we start calling it tremolo? Explain that. Uh, you know that history. It had a uh, vibra champ, I believe it was, right? Tremolo is the on and off fluctuation. Yeah, it's like, whoa, whoa, yeah, whoa, yeah. where vibrato is, whoa, yeah. whoa. So they <laughs> misnamed it to go and coincide with other product that they had. That's so interesting. Because yeah. <laughs> it's blatantly well, wrong. It this is the and first one. He patented this in 1929. Doc Kaufman, it's an apparatus for producing tremolo effects. And this thing is just the most ancient. Yeah, yeah it looks like <laughs> it. I mean, you know, they say Bigsby's go out of tune. This thing is just mm. so fussy. Did Especially get it with the spring too? I got a new spring on there, custom bond spring. So it balances out better, you know, and it gives you better playability. And, and it, you would go this way with it to get the down, spring yeah, and yeah. this way to get vibrato? Yep, yep, yep. I've never seen that. It's just like a tailpiece. It just screws yeah. on. It's, it's, yeah. It seems like a regular design, but yeah. with a spring. But this is the grandfather just, yeah. of all those designs. Uh -huh. you know, this is the very first one. So my next question is, can I play it? You can <laughs> play it, yeah. Cool. Yeah, I mean, it sounds just like an electric guitar. Yeah. Right? Nice. So it rings like a bell. Yeah. That's what Les was always after, just a pure, clean, articulate mm -hmm. tone. How do you change pickups? You can't. You can't? No, so they, were, they were always humbucking each other. You know, ah, that's, he, really? Les hated 60 cycle hum. He, he hated, I do too. You know what I mean? So <laughs> yeah. he always wanted to eliminate that. And initially this guitar was built with one pickup. Yeah, the, and, in the neck, right? And, and uh, I don't know if it was months or years later, and he decided to, to switch it to two pickups. It's a master control. You just got volume and then you got tone. Yeah, because these are both single coils, right? They're not. They're not. When we started building this guitar, we try to find as much source material as possible uh -huh. because there's just, you can't go to a vintage guitar dealer, all the parts that went into production. We just tried to find as many pictures as we could, old interviews with Les. And what we found was that he actually had stacked humbuckers. He was working on stacked humbuckers really? in the 40s, yes. And he has like, the guitar Wait, that what? the guitar that turned us onto that idea, the second version of the log he built is in Waukesha and mm -hmm. it's under glass just like this. And we looked at it and we're like, the bobbins are separated. It's got two coils. So he used like bake, red Bakelite, uh, old old plastic, and um, he split the coils way back then. Wow. So to explain for people that don't know the difference between single coils and humbuckers. So uh, humbuckers, humbuckers are two, they're two coils that cancel each other out. So you're gonna cancel the 60 cycle so hum. Yeah, so. Cause regular single coils, just one pickup. Yep, yep. You're gonna get You're gonna, a, you're gonna a, get lighting, a, anything is gonna yeah. give you that 60 cycle hum. So this is incredibly mm -hmm. quiet. He wasn't a manufacturer, so he couldn't come up with a means of, of actually manufacturing those pickups. So he would go to other people and be like, I have this idea. And if they thought they couldn't manufacture it easy, they're like, well, I'm selling these. I don't need to do anything new. And mm -hmm. you know, just hit the road, man. Wow. Yeah, because humbuckers are like built in noise canceling. Yeah. It's yep, like their yep, main. Yep. They also give a little bit of a like beefier tone. Yep. I thought those came way later. They did. They they were yeah, manufa like manufactured. I mean, yeah, they, they so you had the PAF humbuckers that came out in uh in fifty-seven and they were patented in 59, I believe, but less the stacked humbuckers. When you look at 80 years later, the stacked P90s, less did something very similar mm -hmm. back in the 40s. The solid body electric guitar as we know it, yeah, is kind of just a variation of this. Every one of them, yeah. 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 Gibson didn't want to take a chance on it. Gibson didn't want to take a chance, but the person that did was Epistathopolo, and that's who built Epiphone. They actually started in Greece. They were a mandolin shop that came over to New York. In the 1920s, the son took over and the son was Epistathopolo. He's like, well, I'm going to call this Epiphone. You know, he wanted to be on the forefront of technology and he had a, a research and development center. Les had just come there in 1938 and whatever reason, Epi wound up saying, here are the keys to my factory. You can just build what you want. And he came up with this guitar. That's how this guitar wow. came to be. Just a few years later, Epi died of leukemia. But the likelihood that Epiphone would have been Gibson as we see it today, it, it was almost inevitable. I didn't realize. You know, Epiphone and Gibson were neck and neck with, with jazz arch tops. Leo Fender was watching what Les was doing. Yeah, I didn't realize were, that either. They I all just... were kind of watching what each other was doing yeah. at that time. When Fender came out with the Telecaster. Right away, Ted McCarty called one of his guys and said, find the guy with the broomstick with the pickups on it. <laughs> that was Les with this guitar. He swapped the neck out 
for a Gibson headstock, because then he put Les on a tour and said, we're going to make this look like we've been working on this since the 40s. Mm -hmm. And it, that's not how it happened. Yeah. Gibson didn't give Les the time of day. Because mm. I could see at the time, the thought of not wanting a guitar that amplified itself, that you would need an amp, would probably seem ludicrous. Yeah. Like, why would you want that? Why but would you, you also need to have an amp? You look at these jazz clubs, you would have to mic that up. And now, yeah. you know what I mean? You got like a couple hundred people. This is just right after Prohibition. You got people going crazy in those jazz clubs to get over drums. Yeah. I mean, in so wasn't that the time it was kind of a big band era? Like banjos were yeah. really popular, right? And in large part because they were so loud. Yep, 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 yep. So is that what was going on in guitar at the time? It was just acoustic guitars and they really weren't able to fight, even with the steel strings, they weren't really able well, to fight with the band. So on a, just a regular acoustic guitar, you have yeah. the, the circular sound hole. And, that, and that's been done for hundreds of years. Yeah. But when you play, when you mic that up, the feedback you get. Yeah, yeah. So they switched to jazz arch tops and you can mic it up. You know what I mean? You could get that sound out of it without that crazy feedback because it's F-holes. You don't have that huge surface area. Yeah, because um, the feedback, to the people that might not know how feedback is created, is that you have a guitar that's resonating on its own to create volume, and then you amplify it. The guitar hears that amplification of itself and creates this feedback loop, and then you get all this nasty feedback. There's people that even said that like guitars can blow up from it and stuff like that. I right? could see that <laughs> happening, yeah. So then in the 30s, they decided to put a pickup in a jazz arch top where they actually just cut a hole and put some bracing and then had a pickup in there, put some electronics in a jazz arch top. Les was always like saying to himself, I want to have not only the best playing ability, but I want my guitar to sound the best. Just kind of like Eddie Van Halen with the brown sound. He wanted to have like his own unique like beautiful sound to go with this playing. Mm -hmm. And he realized like when the string is moving, you know, up and down and elliptically, the top is moving too, even yeah. with the jazz arch top. So the pickup is moving up and down and the string is moving up and down. So you're not capturing like the full spectrum of frequencies with mm -hmm. that pickup anymore. It's gonna sound thin and cardboardy. Yeah. It wasn't desirable to him and he always was like, well, how do I solve this? He went to the factory and they had these Charlie Christensen pickups. They essentially are a rail underneath here, under the covers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, these wood covers are very cool. They're wood, wood enamel covers, just like the original mm -hmm. um, with brass base plates, but they're a rail pickup, it's a single, big pole. Oh, this bridge too. And that bridge is ridiculous. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah. he just took a piece of half inch round stock, put two uh -huh. uh, quarter 20 holes in it, metal plate on the bottom. The one thing that I did differently than what Les did, I intonated it, okay? I made the proper mm. intonation. Yeah. And I did that on a CNC because I wanted it to play nicely up yeah. the neck. So the way we created it was we took out scrapped 1940 Epiphone Zephyr that we just happened to get. And we actually got it from the Chicago Music Exchange down below. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. And the thing was cracked from the neck to the tail oh, so you're like, and, and the arch was was caved in so I'm like mm -hmm. this is like the perfect donor instrument from uh -huh. this. I'm not even gonna <laughs> yeah. feel bad destroying it yeah we actually sent somebody down to Nashville to see the original one and get some good pictures mm -hmm. and with software we have if there's something we know the dimension of we can literally get the dimensions of everything else in that photo mm -hmm. and we're able to recreate it within a 64th of an inch or something like that. Because this is a round saddle, the fretboard is also flat. Because there's no oh, curvature. Course, yeah. So otherwise you'd be bending a 32nd on each, on, yeah. on, on the E strings. Everything to do with it, we try to get, including, yeah, including I was we could ask not figure this. out what that was until we, we had our guy go to Nashville. He's like, Tyler, I think it's just masking tape that's collected sawdust, you know, throughout the build. And when he put it all together, he forgot to take it out of there. Yeah. So he sealed it up. <laughs> because there's no shielding principles that would yeah. apply there or anything like that. I'm gonna try this whammy bar. It's gonna be weird going you this way. You should play it a little before you try the right yeah. bar. Oh yeah, because <laughs> yeah, this is going right it's out going of tune. Out. It's done. <laughs> Still a little out of tune. Yeah, it goes out. It's yeah, because now if you have like a tremolo system, why we're still calling it that. Floyd I don't Rose. Know. Yeah, yeah. I, have, I have a few guitars with Floyd Rose. Yeah. Those take a while to tune. But once you tune them, they're in tune for the next like three years. Yeah. But you would have like three big springs instead of this one small yeah, yeah, one. Yeah. yeah, it has a really bright sound to yeah, it. Yeah. I'm gonna go for the whammy bar, I'm gonna wait. <laughs> so the pickups on there, I'm not a, a pickup wiring expert. So I sent them to a guy in Germany, David Barfu's pickups. This guy's literally, you know, taking apart some of the most vintage 
crazy things over in Europe that have gone mm -hmm. over there. So he's worked, I mean, daily, you'll see him with a 51 null caster and stuff like that. So I trusted him to really get that old vintage, you know, wiring with, mm -hmm. the, with the magnets and everything else like that to the T of what Les would have tried to create with that. And, and that was really part of the music at the time too, that they wanted it to be really bright. Really bright, really articulate, almost trying to be as clean as possible, like an acoustic, that's really yeah, what they yeah. wanted. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this is before they were adding in distortion intentionally. Exactly. They were yeah. trying to get as far <laughs> away from it as they could. As Paul yeah. wasn't playing grunge, you know. Yeah. <laughs> he wasn't playing uh, death metal. Yeah. Harmonics are really nice on this too. that clean sound really yeah, bright. Like crazy, yeah, yeah, I really like that. I was kind of expecting the opposite because I kind of assumed that just looking at this body, you would get a neck neck pickup tone all the way down. Yeah. Type of sound. I would expect something like that, but not at all. This is extremely bright. Yep. It's perfect for like finger style. I'm getting a bit of the buzz in between. The bridge is ground. Uh -huh. It might have, it could have fallen off. What Les did is it's just a plate, okay? Mm -hmm. It's just a piece of nickeled, you know, mild steel. If you jangle it around or whatever, that ground yeah, will fall off. off there, so. Mm -hmm. Which is probably accurate to the first one. You would yeah, imagine. no, exactly. I don't trouble. even think he yeah. had a ground on the, on the first one. Uh -huh. I think he made a ton of noise. But the strings have to be ground, and you're grounding them by touching them. So. Uh -huh. I think it buzzing is accurate though for its probably, probably maybe more just accurate. adds a little bit of authenticity you know yeah yeah 60 cycle home <laughs> yeah i say embrace it <laughs> there's yeah. no back <laughs> Yeah, yeah. The thing that's surprising to me is that they started with having this tremolo system on there. I don't know why he did it. Why? He loved why? those tremolos. <laughs> Should I go for the whammy bar? It's your call. <laughs> How much tuning we do? <laughs> All right. Okay, I can see why he brought it in there. All right. Oh, it's, this spring kind of works in that direction as well. But it was meant to go this it's way. It's meant to go up and down. Yeah, that's, it. that's the action. I think it was for dive bombing. Yeah, yeah. 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 You could dive bomb with it, but only once. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and it doesn't really, it's more just that I'm tugging on the strings this way. Yep, yep. Yeah, it's a you really- You can see why they changed the design pretty it's quickly. It's unbelievable yeah. design. Whoa. What he initially invented it for was banjo. Really? Yeah, yeah, Doc Kaufman. He, Really? He made he, he put those on banjos and for some reason There's he thought it would work for electric guitar and yeah <laughs> this I is mean, one of the earliest ones out there Sounds great. That's what we try to accomplish with it. Yeah. yeah. Hopefully, Les would be proud, right? Yeah. <laughs> and I've had that tone knob turned down like almost all the way because this is what kind of I'm used to a tone knob being yep. full. What's the output on these pickups? Like? You know what? I, I can't even tell you. Yeah. It's not too far off of what you would see for, from a P90. So, what was going on in the world of guitar at the time that this was made? Like, what was the average guitar? Like, what was the most popular guitar people were playing? Would you happen to know? Well, I think everybody, a, a, like, this guitar was a very popular guitar, the, the one that we built it on. Mm -hmm. That's what Les used. He uses Zephyr. And those at the time, they would have had an electric pickup on them. They yep. weren't solid body, and they were just in the neck? Yes, just in the neck position. These jazz arch tops were it in guitar. Mm -hmm. That's what everybody was using at the time, and Gibson and Epiphone were the number one. What was play. Fender doing at the time? Well, Fender actually made their own log, which really was like a frying pan. Which yes. Is a really so weird. was that Fender? That was Fender. Really? Yeah. Okay. So yeah, because the history here, because I heard growing up that the log, this, this is the first solid body electric guitar. Period. 
It is. But the yeah. history is way more complicated than that, right? Yeah. Or yeah. is that, well, would you well, say, is, is that an accurate thing is, to say? The thing is, is all these guys, they all were trying to figure out what each other was doing. And they were mm -hmm. friends, more or less. You look at today, and it's a lot of eagles, and people are like, I won't talk to that guy, and I won't talk to that mm -hmm. guy. These guys collaborated because it was kind of the dawn of electric yeah. guitar. I think when Leo saw this was happening, he's like, mm -hmm. well, I got yeah. to try my own. That happened in 1943, so three years after this. A few years later, 1949, was mm -hmm. Leo Fender's first real prototype, the Broadcaster, which became yeah. the Telecaster. I believe it's Gretsch that had a drum kit that was called the Broadcaster, so they got it in yeah. a legal bout. It was the Nocaster for a while. The no And then it became the Telecaster. They went to Nam with it or, or something, and everybody said they called it a boat oar. Because it, just was, it was just a solid <laughs> piece of wood, and like, you just go scream with that. And, you know, everybody was accustomed to this beautiful look of yeah. a jazz arch top. So, saying that this is the first ever solid body electric guitar, you think that, that that's okay. a. Okay. Yeah, yeah, because history gets her. So, Slingerland came up with this songster, and these were essentially Hawaiian uh, lap steel guitars. Okay? Yes, yeah, so that's what I've so, heard that were the first of, like electric guitars. Yeah. But. It was an electric guitar, but it didn't have a body. It was called the frying pan because it had a short. Yes, yes, yes. And you would play it on your lap it's, with a slide. Yeah. It was for a different genre. I think it you needed an artist like Les mm -hmm. to want to bring something like this to the table. And you know, it's all technical, it's all mm -hmm. uh, arguable, but this really, in my mind, when you look at what a guitar is today, this is the first. This is yeah. first. Leo came up with his in 43. Got then, to market with it first. first yes, to have, because, yes, because yes. Gibson essentially said to Les, no. <laughs> like, you are ridiculous. You know, this is not going to work. You had the broadcaster happen in 49, but 51 is when it really hit the market and they started mass producing it. So mm -hmm. I think Ted McCarty from uh, Gibson, that's when he said, you'll call the guy with a broomstick with the pickups on it. Once they saw a Fender doing good yes, sales exactly. with a solid body. Okay, this is legit. This is where people are going with this. And it's still like the Gibson Les Paul is like their main. It's product. an unbelievable I mean, guitar. Yeah. It's beautiful too. You know, it's a carved mm -hmm. maple arch top, the mahogany back. Les's idea that you want to have pickups totally solidly mounted mm -hmm. into a guitar, capturing those frequencies that you, that you want to get out of it. And, mm -hmm. um, and, keep, and keeping the sustain and just capturing sustain, the string. Yeah. If we want to start a fight in the comments, we can say definitively that this is the first solid this body is the guitar. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so used to. <laughs> Where's the switch? <laughs> <laughs> That's how yeah, it would have sounded in 1940. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Distortion for the pitch harmonics. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
what styles of music would with this? Like right when the electric guitar came out. Yeah, it's all that. It's all that jazz stuff. I tried to learn a, a Les Paul and Mary Ford song, or at least one of the songs they played on their show. And it's just a style that's like just so foreign to me. I just don't have yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sure he couldn't play your style. <laughs> <laughs> something I learned from watching him too or like <laughs> yeah. he had a few like guitar tricks <laughs> <laughs> see if I can get try to incorporate the two styles uh. Screwing, I'm trying to figure out that same chord progression. Yeah. But get some like big harmonics in there. <laughs> that harmonic is there. And it is exactly the electric guitar that I know. Yep. Every electric guitar since this. Yeah. It's pretty much just exactly. a variation. Of yep. This. Yep. You can change the pickups, change the shape, maybe add strings, which is something that I like to do. <laughs> what would be a cool song to play on the log? He probably knows some shit. You could have oh, yeah? him do it. Can you play something in the 50s? That's what we need. <laughs> I want to try sure. some of those chords here. Yeah, yeah. It's like a little bit of slap bass in there. Too. Yeah, yeah, yeah kind of. <laughs> Oh, really? Yeah. Give me the most gent possible. Yeah. <laughs> Do you think Les could imagine his guitar being played through so much distortion like that? so much for letting us play this hey, thing, yeah for letting us bring it onto the channel really yep, appreciate yep. it not a problem man not a problem yeah. it's a special piece of history mm -hmm. <laughs>